Good evening, David Van Pach. Van Pach, je sais pas très bien. You can say Van Pach. Van Pach, Van Pach. Van Pach. Okay. Um, thank you very much for this very, very impressive and great show. Um, that was really also with uh, a huge impact. Um, in the end, some people were like, is it over? <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> it's, uh, and, and it's really like um, something um, um, I was very impressed to see because when I, I, I did not see the show before it came here, it was, it was programmed before. And um, when I prepared myself for the show, I was thinking, wow, that's going to be very, very far away from uh, anything of the Sacré du Printemps, of Sarvinsky, of all this. You won't use the music, you won't, uh, you won't use the dramaturgy of the ballet or something. And um, uh, then I was really surprised because all the motives are there. They are so present and you seem to work uh, not only in, in movement and even in the way the space is yeah, it's or Blackwood. When I see, saw it lit, it's like uh, f f all this gives me so much impression of 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 of, of a layer uh, below this uh, necessity, perhaps of uh, um, of 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 the expression of of what was Sacre de Printemps um, um, is meant to to talk about, to deal about, which is obviously not. Uh, uh, a Russian uh, pre-civilizatory society doing some kind of strange thing in spring, but to talk about what society suppressed, what society has um, um, has uh, left behind to become a civilized society, but what is somehow missing, what is necessary to express. But if you express it too much, then everybody will say, no, don't show us this, that's so stupid, we don't want to see um, what happened in 1913 um, in Paris. So. Um, yeah, um, perhaps uh, f about these motives you use in movement, in, in, in the way you use the space, in the way you breathe. Mm -hmm. I mean, this breathing, it's, that's the starting point of, of, of the work when you started to, to, to work on, this, on the topic? Yeah, yeah, that was, it, yeah. Actually, um, I think just to explain perhaps a bit, like, uh, um, I was doing just a year before a Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was wondering, like, coming from the theater field, I was um, I was like uh, I was doing only the abstract piece, and then I Tamar is here. Oh, Tamar, hello, Hi. hello. <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> and thank you very much for joining us. And uh, well, both both of you for for doing this talk right after this. No, that's nice. Um, that's, uh, that's fine. Fine. So yeah, we we'll, uh, we'll just uh, start. Um, so yeah, like. One year before, I was wondering like uh, how uh, it could be if I start with um, a clear uh, material for, for, from the, from the de departure point, like a, like a text, or because usually I was working more with um, photography or cinema reference, but never with a, like an argument, uh, an argument. Je sais pas comment on dit un argument. Well, um, kind of a text. A, a handlung yeah. in German, what yeah. you say, like. Yeah. A like a, yeah, like a text, and then I was like, uh, yeah, I knew about the Writer's Spring. I knew that it was a very small text written by Stravinsky and Nicolas Rurik, mm. uh, which is another father of the Writer's Spring. I mean, we speak about Nijinsky and, and, and Stravinsky, but neither. I mean, not so much about Nicolas Rurik. But he's not the costume. He's a costume and setup designer. Okay. But he's also the one who uh, wrote oh. the text with Stravinsky. But then it was a big, uh, uh, controverse. Uh, controversy. Contro yeah, between them because uh, everybody said like uh, um, it couldn't be Stravinsky who wrote that because it was really about the antiquity, the Russian antiquity, and Nicolas Rurik was was uh, expert on that. He was doing some studies on that and, and everything. I explained that because uh, all my, my work before was super visual, like uh, also like we use like body paint as costumes or. Uh, we also work with Tamar on a previous piece, like, uh, yeah, always working on a kind of um, wondering if it's naked or dressed, like uh, wondering if it's a kind of both, both in the same time, like showing the, the body and in the same time feeling that you are dressed also. So just to explain that, we were, I, w I was really in visual thing, in abstract thing, and then I, w I was like, yeah, let's go on something more concrete. So I was like, yeah, let's do a writer's spring, and then I was like, oh. <laughs> no, so many, so many. Uh, One more. Yeah, and like uh, all this memory that you bring with you. So I was like, okay, not, let's not do that. And let's do a nutcracker that in, I don't know, but in contemporary dance, at least in France, it's a bit like, it's just for Christmas. Yes. It's not, it's, it's too popular in a way. And I was like, yeah, okay, I don't care. And I'm really interested on in that. So we made a nutcrackers with eight dancers. So it's a 
big, yeah, it's a group piece. We use ballroom and we use the music of Tchaikovsky. So then with the sound designer, I, I spoke and then I said, let's make something else after. And I said, okay, finally, let's make the Roger <laughs> Spring. Let's take the risk. And, uh, and I proposed him, but without using the Stravinsky score, even though let's work on it, let's work with the music, but, but let's not play the music uh, as it is because it, I love it, it's so powerful, it's so strong, but then perhaps let's just take the, I don't know, the ideas, the, the, the essence or, and then, um, I, mean, I don't know, it makes sense to use the hyperventilation as a kind of also of um, a way of being um, kind of in this, because uh, Stravinsky and Rurik, the two father of the piece, they speak a lot about this uh, drunkness state or ivresse et en enivrement, mm -hmm. so yeah, kind of drunkness, mm -hmm. and also ecstasy. Mm -hmm. And I also explaining that for them, like a, a, a spring is not something like a Walt Disney with the flowers and everything is romantic. For them, at, at least most, most of all for Nicolas Rurik, he explained that for him, spring, it's super violent because it's like the, the division of the cell, yeah, les cellules. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's always about, yeah, making something and then divided and, and so on. And so they explain how um, spring is violent and how it brings you in a kind of state of fear or, 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 or or drunkness. Yeah. Yeah, it's a metaphor of, of a nature being being like eating up other things. Yeah, exactly. Like a jungle metaphor. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's why, like, we, I knew, and I, I mean, when you're a kid, you play with this kind of uh, this this game, or so, like someone is behind you and and, and putting uh, up, yeah, you know? yeah. and then you faint. <laughs> and. So from the beginning, we had this idea of working with hyperventilation, hyper but not with the music, even though I don't know if you realize, but the first sound and this, the last, the last one, one yeah. is from the score. Yeah, well, the last one is, is obviously, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's also, um, but I think what is really uh, very, um, well, I didn't, it didn't pass in my, in my mind the whole time. Also, I'm not, not such a, a freak of, of listening to <laughs> Stravinsky music all the time. The, the rhythm um, um, and, and the way it is, it, the movement of the music seems to be represented um, and, and redone um, uh, uh, and restaged in a little, in a, in a, in a way of, of, of this symphony of hyperventilation, but at I least call we, it. Yeah. We don't follow the score. Symphony perhaps yeah. is a too harmonic. Many people <laughs> think that we follow the score. Yeah. Like, uh, no, I, a, yeah. But we don't. Yeah. yeah. But you follow very much the movement, I think, and not perhaps in, in, in tone by tone, not in the mm -hmm. idea of, of copying it in, in just without hints or just yeah, with. Yeah, we, we were inspired also. Yeah, totally. We were, we were improvising with it. And, yeah, we were inspired totally. We listen great version of this, uh, uh, the right, like even like with uh, electric guitar mm -hmm. or only one piano. Yeah, there are many, many versions of uh, the Rider Spring. And you talked about the visual part of it, and and in a, in a, in a sense, uh, starting with these little um, um, things on your heads. Um, the hoods. Uh, yeah, the hoods, which uh, and and then obviously when you come out with that uh, with that big uh, dress, um, it's somehow it's not very Russian, but it's somehow it's, I thought it's somehow Dutch, so it's like a Franz Hals uh, a painting or something. Also, the state of, of in, in in which you, which you go and, and and finally in which you end up um, has some somehow to do with these very extreme and ecstatic. Uh, images of these medieval faces of yeah, the, the, the Renaissance the, yeah, faces. Yeah, yeah, more perhaps Middle Age, you're right. Um, I, f I felt like, uh, in a way, like uh, wondering, I was like kind of lost in time, like wondering, okay, where we are, working on this uh, reference. And, and, and yeah, like it's about the antiquity, uh, in the same time, w the, the reference, it's a piece made in 1913. We did the piece two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, okay, so nearly 100 years ago, now it's 100 years ago. But speaking about the antiquity, so I was like, okay, let's go to Middle Age. Like it's also uh, a period that I really love. I feel that sometimes we have a kind of, yeah, uh, in French it's very pejorat pejorative. Yeah, yeah. When you say yeah. it's Moyen-Ageux, so it means like it's really oldish or, mm -hmm. But I think that Middle Age is full of many uh, nice um, hi historical and cultural things, like also like yeah, like going for the croisade, croisade, yeah, the croisade, croisade, yeah. croisade, and and also yeah, many 
Et comment on dit des tapisseries en anglais C'est tapisseries. Tapisserie. Yeah, tapisserie. Like the one of the ap apocalypse or... Yeah, there are many texts, songs, paintings, tapestry, like, that are full of... Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't have the, the words. <laughs> yeah, but it's like uh, it's what I that's what what I mentioned in the beginning that it's uh, this kind of uh, go back to a state pre reason and 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 pre civil. I mean, this is not an uncivilized time, but it's a time which is mainly governed by uh, motives which are more corporal, which are more in the in the body, in the in the damnation of of sexuality, in the way of controlling this. But for sure, in the other way around, in in using it in another animalesque way as mm. you are approaching uh, here and and I mean I, I was when I saw it actually I was really thinking well that I mean if you read it today like 100 years later um, uh, this um, huge scandal in in Paris in a city which like 1913 there was actually usually recently published a book in Germany about like a fertonistic research on what all, all the things that happened in 1913 like in the, in the artist scene and everything for sure also the right of spring scandal is part of it but so it is not a completely stubborn uh, 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 it's not a completely stubborn society which is uh, just conservative no it's very open it's not open um, 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 just for some from some exceptions perhaps for this kind of very direct perhaps also in the in the The, in the choreography of Nijinsky, the very uh, direct and un, unbroken um, approximation to something which is somehow pre-civilizatoric, I don't know, and which is somehow um, bringing back uh, a kind of necessity or a kind of uh, um, insight of, 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 of what we are and w what we were or what we somehow not try to be anymore, mm -hmm. um, um, that it is um, confronted with such a rejection, incredible, I don't know. I mean, um, but I, I, I never felt about this context and, 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 uh, and about this, uh, these motives for this situation in 1930 so much uh, uh, when w and watching any uh, right of spring. One of the <laughs> I did not see most of those 200, 300, I don't know, right in spring uh, choreographies uh, from the yeah, past and from the yeah. present. I mean, it's really a lot. But um, uh, this one, I really started to think about the original very much. In this one, in yeah, because <laughs> I don't know because it somehow gets to a certain a core of of, uh, of, mm. of motivation in it. I don't know. It's that. I mean, perhaps uh, you don't see this this way, but somehow elsewhere, and um, <laughs> like to join with yeah. your comment or your question. Or you want to comment something else? I think. No, if you have questions or yeah, or comments could be. Nice to hear. Ich hätte zum Beispiel so eine Frage, äh, welche Bilder, Filme vielleicht äh, konkret außer Stravinsky haben Sie inspiriert zu diesem Stück? I didn't understand everything. Like, uh, which um, pictures, uh, uh, Bilder und Filme, Filme pictures, Bilder, movies, um, literature, uh, literature uh, have have uh, inspired you when creating also, the piece, despite uh, uh, addition, in addition to Slavinsky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, like um, uh, a Jewish photographer called um, Tr Tr Trudy Fleischmann. Mm -hmm. I mean, we started to work in uh, Vienna mm -hmm. with Tamar. And uh, I don't know, by coincidence, I went to see the, the exp exhibition and she was uh, photographing a lot of our dancers, artists, cabaret artists. And, and the photo are very... In the 20s, 30s, in Berlin mostly. Yeah, yeah. in, in Ber Vienna. Berlin and Vienna. And all, all the first part of Tamar, when she's walking, like doing a kind of on the walls, doing all this work, mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I felt something very twisted and... Uh, I felt she could be the, the one who will be sacrificed and, and just she has to be, yeah, I don't know, I don't want to explain so many history, but I felt very inspired by these photos. Mm -hmm. And then I think we, we also, what kind of, uh, we saw a movie for this piece? And sometime well, we I saw rituals of, uh, of trance and ecstasy from uh, different rituals in Africa. Uh, yeah, yeah, by yeah. This, uh, Yeah, then we, we watch some kind of documentary on, on what is a ritual, like also from Jean Rouge, you know, like Les Maîtres Fous. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a um, anthropologist, I think. No. 
Jean Rouge, yes. A French entrepreneur. A French entrepreneur or sociologue. Je ne sais pas si c'est un anthropologue ou sociologue. Anyway, he made a lot of uh, documentary in Africa, and one one called uh, Les Maîtres Fous, and it's just amazing how they build a ritual, and they it's like they make a, um, they uh, embody the role of the uh, English who came to uh, colonize, so they get completely in a kind of trance, and they have uh, like they. Saliva, yeah. and foam coming out of their mouth. It's and all a th it's theatrical, basically, but it's a uh, yeah, very interesting. It's a possession of, of uh, yeah, a kind of possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the, I mean, um, I mean, most of all, yeah, it was like this Trudy Fleshman and all this kind of documentary. But something like I, I can say, it's also like. Um, I was also wondering a lot about, uh, for the choreographical material, for the yeah, body material, what could be sacred? Because, uh, uh, yeah, we say sacre in French, but we say right in English, so. And we say. <laughs> and you say. Opfer in German. Opfer. <laughs> well, one of the titles in German. Uh, yeah. So we have really three different. Yeah. Um, not very identical. Uh, no. Which is which is weird, you know. Titles, yeah. But in, uh, for Sacre, I was really interesting about also what is sacred, like, um, and I, um, I felt that uh, in, in in performing art, like sometimes we we forgot about the fact that coming on stage, being stand up, it's something very important and and sacred, like it's also polit political, and uh, and we were with Tamar, we were really wondering about how. Uh, yeah, I think one of the most uh, the biggest task was like how to be stand up on stage for this piece, as if it was vertical. a yeah, yeah. vertical, as if it's the most sacred thing. And I don't know, I don't know if you noticed, but the first time that uh, ta uh, someone is really vertical, but without the wall, it's very late. It's, a, it's mm. about half an hour of after the show when she enters with the. With the, the apple. cube, mm. <laughs> the apple. Mm. So all, all the, the 31st minutes, we are always scrolling on the floor, or we are against the walls, but we are never stand up. So it takes a long time. But also the way she carries the apple could be something that keeps her up here, you know. Yeah. It's not even that, it's not that suffering yet, yeah, yeah. but for much more. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's also something, the way you treat the floor and you treat the wall, yeah. um, I, that, I thought that was very, Mm. Yeah, there was also a big part of this um, of this vocabulary of of, of moti motives and motivations of yeah. of, 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 of the secret of, of I mean because most of the um, most of I mean I don't know most I say most of the of the sacre uh, choreographies which I did not see so but like the Pina Bausch I remember the Pina Bausch version and it was so much about the floor and the earth and the, the earth. material on the on the so mm -hmm. um, but for sure there was an illustration of something that worked very well in that time but it's like here it's very abstract but very concrete in that uh, in that way and I think it's also um, it's also interesting to to, to what is the wall and what is the floor and um, um, I don't know also even these yeah this kind of statue totem which is like in the end um, uh, in the middle of it it's it's like a, it's 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 like a funny commentary on what we have done before yeah because uh, with the, the space there are not only the Indians who are using a totem like no. a, a, like a colon like also in the Greek or uh, Greek period and for for me like the totem was very interesting uh, also for kind of finding a solution about who will be sacrificed, mm -hmm. her or me, she or me. So it was like, yeah, let's, let's sacrifice this symbol, which is of course like the phallus, but also uh, the, the, um, the totem is like the connection with the ancestor. So it's not to kill the ancestor, it's more about con uh, killing something that perhaps protects yourself and you, you feel uh, not vulnerable when you feel protected. It's also like, uh, I was reading something very interesting about the symbol of the totem, saying that it's also a way to, how uh, uh, can we say that? Le totem, ça, ça donne un peu la possibilité d'avoir un, un, un toit imaginaire well, a, a qui protège. A roof that protects. Yeah, a roof, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So that, that's, uh, that's also a way to, you just have to put the, the colon, but you can also imagine that it's a colon for putting, yeah, a ceiling, 
a roof, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also the, the roof of the totem is also the, it's because it's a container, like you contain yeah. all yeah. this, all these things we talked about before, all this stuff from before, from the inside, the taboo stuff, you put it into the totem so you have, you contain it, so you make it visible in a sense, if it, even if it's an abstract way of making it visible, but everybody knows that's in there. Mm. So um, um, I think using this totem in the end brings also very much to the point what, what this whole thing, this whole Stravinsky thing is about in a certain way, like not to illustrate some um, Russian rights or something, but really to, illust to, 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 to manifest yourself about something um, that itself has been sacrificed um, by society to become a modern society, but uh, what, what, what was it and how is it so much um, separated from oneself um, uh, that it's not only like a, a, um, 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 a fortunate um, a progress but it's also a huge loss of something that in a certain way and that like one year later the first world war starts and this 20th century in a certain way starts uh, uh, to progress uh, in this very horrible and not so civilized way it then started so that is for me also a very historic connection to, to what happened mm. for example um, well you see I read this book from 1930 <laughs> it's yeah, like okay one? it's this one I mentioned where this guy uh, yeah, yeah. made this huge <laughs> this huge collection of, uh, of uh, very uh, yeah very interesting things happening in some the year before the First World War. Some other question? Or? Yeah. Also, it's a shame that you can't speak a little bit in Deutschland. Ach so, Entschuldigung, ja. Ich dachte, das ist. Ah. Okay, okay. Aber ich wollte ich wollte mein Feedback aussprechen. Ich bin Russin. Und interessiere mich für die Wahrnehmung von Europa und la perception de l'Europe à la Russie et aussi sur la perception qu'elle a eu avec la pièce. Ja, und sie haben gar keine Filme oder Literatur oder Bilder genannt, die ich erwartet habe. Et vous n'avez pas du tout mentionné des films ou des littératures russes qu'elle a, elle a même expecté. What can I say? Like, I'm crazy about Tarkovsky. Non, elle a les... C'est pas du tout un problème. Je veux dire, quand j'ai vu ce film, j'ai vu mes images dans le cœur. L'association... Quand elle a vu la pièce, elle a vraiment eu sa, sa propre, ses propres images dans la tête et ses propres euh, associations. Mais c'est le plus important. Pour tout, je suis très fasciné par son image. Et j'étais super fasciné de, euh, de votre, euh, euh, votre figure. C'est presque une icône, euh, oui, Tamar. Ah, ta, uh, yeah, actually, I forgot. We, on n'a pas parlé de. A bit Russian. My grandparents were Russian. We watch, we watch her, so uh, it's not because you're Russian that I'm saying that. We watch. It's not because they're Russian that I'm saying that. We watched the mirror. We watched the mirror of Tarkovsky. Oui. We watched miro le miroir, the mirror. Wir haben den Spiegel von Tarkovsky gesehen. Ah, ja, das haben Sie aber nicht gemacht. Ah, ja. Aber vous n'avez pas mentionné <lacht> ça dans, dans cette Liste. Wie konnte sie so genau intuitiv? Mais elle, ça, elle, elle a vraiment elle a pensé de, de ce type de littérature, de ce type de film. Et elle a été vraiment choquée que ça s'est bâti comme ça, avec, la, la, avec le travail ici. Bon, ça, c'était bien. Ah, Donc, on mentionnait. Okay. Vor allem eine wilde russische Energie, die immer noch da ist. Ja, die Energie, die sauvage russe, die war wirklich sauvage im Moyen Âge. Russland ist immer noch wild. Und noch immer, es ist ein Land super sauvage. Ich sehe das. Und dann plakative Stellungen. Und die Position plakative, ich weiß nicht, wie man das in Französisch sagt. Avec beaucoup de pathos, qui peut être ridicule, mais parce que c'est très fort le pathos. Mais j'ai vu ça et ça m'a plu beaucoup, ça m'a impressionné beaucoup. Beaucoup d'humeur, d'humeur aussi dans la relation entre les hommes et les femmes. C'était excentrique, très sauvage. Elle était super fascinée de ça. Merci beaucoup. Merci.
Ich wollte mal wissen, ob das dann seine diese Körpersprache, die Sie, die Sie benutzen, ähm, ist es auch eine Auseinandersetzung mit der Klasse, dem klassischen Ballett? Also, ich Elle aimerait savoir si. Si tu as fait des cours de, de ballet, je crois. Hein, non, non, c'est si vraiment la, la, la expression corporelle pour, pour vous deux aussi, c'est une, comme une, une, une réverté le ballet classique. Une, une réverté le ballet classique, se, se, discuter le ballet classique, se, se confronter avec le ballet classique. Elle était intéressée dans la relation de votre langage corporel avec le ballet classique. You want to say something? Uh, uh, personally, I, have, uh, I started with classical uh, ballet, of course. I mean, all my training was uh, classical. Uh, so I think it's something that stays with you. I mean, it's really the, the core, the, the, the base of uh, what came afterwards. Um, But today, like in what we are doing now, uh, I, I don't really think about it. I think my body probably, of course, has it. Um, but uh, <laughs> not more than that. Right? In my case, I, I did it very late. Uh, I started very late. Uh, but we had a ballet class in Brussels with a school of Aunt Teresa, the Kerschmacher. And we had everyday ballet and contemporary dance. But I felt all the time that when I had ballet, I couldn't breathe. I was like, <gasps> I, was like I was so much connected with my uh, trying to pull my leg, pull up, ça? pull, lift, lift. Mm -hmm. So and I couldn't, and it, it was so pain, painful that I was like, I couldn't breathe, and I was really blocked. And sometimes I was obliged to cry to release. And I was crying a lot in, and normally I don't cry so much, but in ballet class I was, I was crying. I was like, <laughs> and it, it helps to release. Mm. So then I had this kind of, <laughs> so perhaps, I, I mean, I never thought about it. Mm. So you helped me to remind me, perhaps there is a kind of connection with ballet in this sense that I, I was like so, you know that this hyperventilation is also used in a kind of th therapy, therapy, mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. So they use it in a group and they do like, <laughs> in a group and then they release. Of course, it's, it's not, perhaps you think it's painful, but it's not. It's like, it's really, yeah, it relaxes the diaphragm. So it helps to, yeah, to mobilize it, to, uh, to use all this part of, uh, Yeah, the lungs and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think there is for me perhaps a connection with ballet in these terms of uh, going against <laughs> this. Uh, and also I remember like, because I, I love uh, classical music also and being in a, ba in a ballet class and having, I remember like the teacher was always saying to the pianist because we had a real pianist, I mean, a human being. And, sh and, and the teacher was like, slow down <laughs> or speed it up you know? and, like, and it was so hard and, and the sound was like it was so <laughs> ugly to hear and, and finally to see this connection between uh, dance and, and music uh, of course was a, in, a, in, a, in a class but still was a kind of how do we we uh, find a relation between dance and music and I was like so from that moment I, I never wanted to have a kind of collaboration with a musician that followed the dance I was totally against this idea of having a musician following what I'm doing because mm. it happened that I also did meet uh, made some duet with a, a pianist on stage but I he was a great pianist using normally big big piano mm -hmm. but for this piece I asked him if it was okay to use a, a small one mm -hmm. the one that we use in the ballet class mm -hmm. and to not to dance but just to to play with the piano and at the same time to push it <laughs> so he was walking or on the stage <laughs> like this and he was not following me actually I was more follow, following him yeah. sometimes <laughs> now I mean it's important this connection and relation between dance and uh, music Somebody else? Then I think they worked a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, thank you very much. Not more? <laughs> Last one if you want, and then we can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the work 
bei der Atmung und den Prozessen, also wenn ich jetzt mit dem Stuhl arbeite. Ich hatte das Gefühl, dass ich bestimmte Stellen äh, Sequenzen, kritische Sequenzen, Il aimerait, il aimerait savoir un peu plus sur la structure de la de respiration pendant la, euh, la, 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 la succession de la pièce. Il a eu l'impression qu'on a eu des, des, des séquences rythmiques avec la respiration pendant la pièce. Il, il, a, il a perçu des moments qu'il pourrait falloir sur une, sur une perpétuo mobile. Sur quoi Sur une perpétuo mobile. Je ne sais pas comment on dit ça en français. C'est une... Oh, une oh, un moment, il faut perpétuo mobile faire. Oh, en anglais Oui, c'est un terme latin. C'est une chose qui va... Ah oui, 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 je pensais que c'était un autre mot. Oui, c'est un autre mot. Oui, c'est un autre mot. Oui, c'est un autre mot. Il a aussi eu l'impression qu'il y, qu y a certains moments où vraiment des parties de la musique de, du Stravinsky ont été imprégnées sur ce système de respirer. Et ça, c'est son perception, bien sûr. Mmh. Sa perception. Et ça, ça... Ils sont questions à elle, comme... Comment ça Fonction pendant la répétition, il y a des paramètres avec lesquels on travaille sur certaines euh, séquences euh, comme ça, avec la respiration. Comment, comment était le procès de répéter ces, ces phases ces, ces... Ou ça fonctionne seulement comme un mouvement, un mouvement régulier, régulier. Mm. Um, it, it's quite written. I mean, we don't count each breathing, but it, it's not it's not so improvised um, because we repeat it a lot. Um, the first part when she's alone, and then I, I, I we switch and I am alone. Mainly, uh, except the work I was saying about this uh, Viennish, Viennese, or Viennese, Viennese photographer, except the work of Tamar at the beginning, as soon as she starts with the hyperventilation, it was, I mean, I give you the, back, I mean, comment on dit, uh, les, les, sous, les sous bassements de la pièce. Okay, I, 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 sous -texte, well, sous -texte. I explain how it was written, but we made a duet, and then we separate, and she's doing, alone and I'm doing alone and um, and then we yeah we, we keep the way to breathe and we repeat 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 so then it starts to be quite written in a way also the dynamic as you said I think that sometimes it's uh, we accelerate sometimes we t t accelerate we also use apnea I don't know if you realize that we have apnea you know yeah, when you hold the, mm -hmm. the breath that actually help us also a lot for avoiding to have the head. Mm -hmm. So when we do it, it's also because we need it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's funny, but, but doing apnea helps to refresh the, I don't know, circulation. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, I don't know why, but <laughs> just to do, yeah, yeah it's like, you do, stop and it's like, yeah. and then we restart. So we, I think the musicality was more and more written by doing it again and again. Okay. And until the end, yeah, it's ma it's basically like that. Yeah. When she's doing the apple alone, or when we do the duet, sometimes it's also because uh, when she entering, I was alone for eight minutes. So when she entering, sometimes as soon as I am back, I stop, and then I restart. You know, mm -hmm. just because I we also deal with the, the tiredness. There are also decisions of um, lowering it, like. And or stronger. I mean, we played with the palette, with the scale of, of it also. There was a part of the episode where the atmung absolutely held the burden. He talks about this moment of the as pause. Like that, it was a pause. I had the feeling that there comes in this particular situation a certain ruhe. Il a perçu que dans ces moments d'apnée, de, de, de 
on a vraiment introduit aussi un certain moment de silence ou de, de quiétude. De quiétude, hein Yeah. Et comme, comme ça aussi des, des ruptures dans la, dans la narration mm, qu'on a eue. Yeah, yeah. On a recommencé ou commencé un nouveau épisode comme ça. Ok, merci beaucoup. Merci. Ok, merci à tous. Sagen Sie es doch noch ein bisschen weiter, dass wir das Stück morgen noch mal spielen. Ähm, es ist aus einem unerklärlichen Grunde irgendwie aus unserem Septemberprogramm rausgefallen, weil der Oktober anfang und unser Oktoberprogramm noch nicht reingefallen, weil der September ja noch gar nicht richtig zu Ende war. Also äh, entgegen ähm, unserem Oktoberheft äh, ist es auch morgen noch zu sehen. Und wenn Sie es noch ein bisschen weiter erzählen, dann ähm, trägt das sicherlich also ja, zum Ausbau Ihrer Freundschaften bei, aber natürlich auch zum besseren Verkauf unserer Vorstellung. Danke fürs Kommen und bis zum nächsten Mal.